All right, so having covered some of the basic ideas of animation, position, size, all of that, um, now we can transition to another idea that's really core to a lot of animation, especially in video games called sprites. Um, sprites are a series of images that change over time and allow you to create little mini animations within you know, your larger context. This is used for game characters, for elements in the game, all that kind of stuff. Um, and what I did is I went ahead and I, I Googled sprite sheets and I found this cool one from the game Doom, which I played way too much as a kid. Um, some kind of explosion, I don't know if it's a barrel or whatever, but um, it's really cool. This is also meant uh, for free download. So um, I'm able to use it in my project and it comes in the format of called a sprite sheet. And um, that's a full image that contains all the frames. This is really common um, in games and especially older games. But um, what it is, it's a, P a PNG file and it's got a transparent background, which is also really great. So it'll allow us to see whatever in our sketches behind this. Um, and then I cut this apart. Uh, I happen to make a tool using P5.js to do that um, using the get command, but you could also do it manually in Photoshop. Um, and you could also make your own sprite sheets. This could be something you make in Photoshop uh, or Illustrator, or maybe even draw by hand and scan or photograph. Um, and this allows us to make really complex animations that would be difficult or impossible to do just with code. So this kind of explosion thing would be much better done you know, in some other software and then brought into P5.js. So it's something you can think about. Um, they're in a folder then called frames and each one then contains a frame of this animation. Um, you'll also see that they're numbered, the files are numbered sequentially and this is really important. This is, uh, we'll see that in a minute. So I've done that work ahead of time. This looks good and I've got my sketch open. So the first thing that we need to do um, is to load our images. And in the past, we've done these using, uh, you know, an object, a variable like this, but it, you know, we've got 48 frames in this animation. So we would need to do it that way, frame one, frame two, frame three, et cetera. This is gonna get really cumbersome, especially if you had more than one uh, animation like this. And imagine having to load all the, you know, it's just a nightmare. Better then would be to create an array called frames, and then we can put our images inside of it. So I'm gonna do that. And then I need one other variable, which is I need to know how many frames are in this. And I happen to know it's 48. And then we can use preload uh, to load these. Remember, we use preload for images and stuff like that because JavaScript is not synchronous. It's not going to pause and wait for us to load those images before trying to draw them, and you're going to get an error as a result. Um, so uh, for, to do this, I'm going to use a for loop. Again, you know, doing this manually one at a time would be a total pain. Uh, so instead, I can use i, which go between zero and the number of frames. And then I can build the file name dynamically and then use it to load the image. So I can say file name is, and it's in a folder called frames. And it's the file name is i.png. So that's making this dynamic file name. And then we can load our image like that. And then we, now that loads it, but then we want to put that in our list so we can say frames.push frame. So I'm going through all the files. I'm creating these dynamic file names between zero and 48. Um, I'm loading the file, the image, and then putting it in that list. Let's uh, go ahead and run this and make sure everything works. I'm going to open up my console and refresh, and I don't see any errors. So that's really great. This is a good way of checking to make sure everything is kind of going the way you expect it to. Um, okay, so I've loaded those up. Now to be able to draw this animation, I need a couple other variables. Um, I want an X and a Y, and, um, oh, and then I need to know which frame I'm drawing on the screen. Am I drawing the first frame, the second frame, etc.? cetera? Um, so I'm gonna create a variable called which frame and start it at zero, the first frame of the animation. Then in my setup, let's go ahead and we'll start it in the center for now. In a little bit, we'll see how we can trigger it to restart the animation in different locations. And then our draw. So um, I know I want image mode center. This works just like rect mode center where it draws it from the middle rather than the corner. I think this just makes more sense. 
And then how do we know what image to draw? Well, we know we have this list of images called frames um, and we need the index. So which, which spot in that list and that's going to be which frame and that's gonna go at X and Y. Save this and we should see the very first frame show up. Super, looks great. Then in order to get this to animate, all we need to do, just like position, rotation, all these things, uh, we just need to update that variable. So which frame we add one, and now we see our animation, and now we're probably getting a bunch of errors in the console. Um, and the reason is that it's uh, run out of images. It's gone past the size of that array and it's freaking out. Um, so to fix that then, we need to, just like if we're bouncing an image, we need to be able to reset this. So we can say if, which frame equals the size of the array, which is frames.length, then which frame equals zero. And so this is gonna cause it to reset. And now we'll see this, this cool explosion playing out over and over because it's got an alpha value in the background, it's a PNG, uh, we're seeing this gray through it. So it looks really realistic, um, which is pretty cool. It's also, you know, this is a very nicely made sprite. So it's got some shake and all this cool stuff to it. Let's say then we also want it to appear in a new spot after it's done or when it resets the animation. And we can do that right here in this if statement, if statement as well. We can say X is a random location between zero and width and Y between zero and height. And now the sort of like fireworks of explosions going off here, um, which is pretty awesome. So you could easily find some sprites that you wanted to work with, but even more awesome would be to make your own, again, in Photoshop and Illustrator drawn by hand and photographed. Um, you just need a folder of sequential images that you're then drawing on the screen and um, loading into a list and all that stuff. So this is a really cool way of adding lots of detail, texture, that kind of thing to, to your animations.